right guys check this out we are ready for another am4 mid to budget build and this time we're building almost exclusively from used parts apart from the m.2 ssd which is new and the wraith prism amd stock cooler uh, is more of an open box build it's not been used though and without further ado let's get down to the parts list so we have a fractal design cabinet the slots on the sides here are good so i think it should give us ample airflow even though the front is closed off we've got an asus rogue strix b450 f gaming 2 motherboard we're using an amd a ryzen 5 2600 and this cpu here is the same cpu we used in the the black and white build but i upgraded that to uh, 3600 so it's actually the same cpu we're using the amd a Wraith Prism stock cooler. We got the Asus ROG Strix GeForce GTX 1066GB GPU here. And this one is a 3 lower. I really like this card. It's really cool. We got 16 gigabytes of G-Skill DDR4 3000 mega transfers RAM. And in my honest opinion, more than 16 gigabytes of RAM on a gaming PC is wasted. Computer simply doesn't use, use that. And instead of purchasing more RAM, you should then get a better graphics card that is able to kind of utilize that in some way. We got the Kingston NV2 PCI 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD. That is 500 gigabytes. And we will not be putting another drive into this, and that's simply to keep the price down so that the person who purchases this is able to upgrade if they need to. Our Wi Fi adapter is an Asus PCE AC68. This is a Wi Fi. 5G card and in my opinion is perfectly suitable for this kind of build the only drawback is the fact that there's no Bluetooth on it and for our PSU we are using the Corsair TX 550M that's a semi modular PSU here okay so like always I like to start by kind of scoping out the build a bit and we start with the PSU want to see like how we're going to run the cables a bit because you know if you want your build to look great then in my opinion we need to start thinking about cable management from the get-go. And this kind of outside bracket here is perfect because it allows us to insert and take out the, the PSU from the back side of the, of the cabinet here. This one didn't have any up and down. PSU on the other hand does. Since there is a filter here, we're mounting it intake fan down. 80x cable will be going through here something like that so for the the cpu it's going up through here maybe up along here along these cable ties there's spaces for cable ties here so it's a good space for the cpu i think or the cpu power cable for the gpu maybe we take the the atx cable through the up and take the GPU cable through here. Gives us a lot of a ton of space. I mean, we got a ton of space in this cabinet as it is. Did I forget the SATA in? Are we using SATA power for anything in this build? But we could leave it in here, you know, as a good gesture for the guy purchasing it, if they like the quick way of connecting to a SATA drive. Or we could take it out and send it with the other cables. I think that's what we'll do. So that's what we'll do. We'll take the SATA cable off. And of course the cables will, will, I mean, follow the build. So it's time for the motherboard. The Asus Republic of Gamers Strix B450F Gaming. We got two NVMe M.2 ports here. Really nice heat shields. And one of my pet peeves, you know, they actually managed to put one of these PCIe times one slots above where you're supposed to put the GPU so you don't need to mess about with PCIe riser cables and such infinitely expandable this I mean it's a huge motherboard and they are even like reinforced metal reinforced these PCIe times 16 slots so our Ryzen is a fantastic little CPU pins are perfect the triangle is on the top left there Slots into place. And Bob's your uncle. I don't know if this has any effect, but I like to wipe the CPU or the top of the CPU with a little bit of alcohol after I've touched it, just to get any fat from my fingers away from it. The cooler, the cooler, the cooler, the cooler. 
let's plan this out will there be anything with text on I'd like the text to be like this on the motherboard anyway the brackets here they need to go Yeah, I think Future Me has to handle this extra long cable because I want the AMD text to be on top there. So this is the, the cooling gel we'll be using. Cooler Master Master Gel Pro V2. Personally, I don't think there is a lot of gain to buying an expensive cooling paste. I mean, maybe if you need some extreme cooling, but I mean, we're going with the, with the stock AMD cooler. So after watching Adamant IT, I'm going with the cross pattern. Oh, we're out. So there's another one, that's the Bilentum Puck. Bilentum PC Puckdom PT1. And that was all, come on! I think I'll be, <laughs> for the first time in my life, I think I'll be using the spatula to, to wipe the... <laughs> oh, word! And then we have the Dezen Thermal Compound. It's a three for three, this one. Yeah, normally I don't kind of work it around with the spatula, but since my pattern got kind of messed up with the different pastes here, we're doing this now. Yep, perfect. Perfect enough. Ah, okay, so the, the shield will only go on one way, like so. Maybe we'll screw off these. Can we do that? And turn the shield. We're off script now, to be honest. I don't see why we wouldn't be able to, but maybe the world doesn't want us to. So it looks like this, we're turning it this way. Well, that should be perfectly fine. All right, so perfect. I turned the uh, a shield 90 degrees, so we can get the text right away, right. Apparently you don't need to tighten these screws very much, because I mean, once the screws are engaged, then a couple of turns into there. It's the, the springs that are putting pressure onto it, so that looks perfectly fine to me. Yeah. And it's a RAM, it's a G-Skill, DDR4, it's a 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3000 megahertz RAM. Usually for the Asus motherboards, it's the, you start on the right and you skip one and you do the other slot there for a dual channel setup. So that's our RAM, now let's do our M.2 disk. So the first thing we need to do is to relocate this here standoff up here. They usually send these small wrenches here, you know, so it kind of converts your Philips drive to a, uh, a hex socket. So a very low standoff this. I don't know how I like the, the height of that standoff. We'll see. Right, so for some reason, used motherboards at least, and maybe normally, they don't seem to come with a lot of these uh, fixings for M.2 discs and there's like a minimum amount of standoffs and screws so I got this M.2 mounting kit I'll leave a link for it in the video description if I can find it that was a bit fiddly so our M.2 disc the Kingston NV2 PCIe 4.0 NVMe M.2 disc and the reason we're mounting it up here is because this here these PCIe lines up here, they usually connect directly to the CPU as well as the, the motherboard one. Once you start connecting it down here, it usually has to go through the south bridge. I didn't check in the manual, of course, but I mean, that's usually how it is. Then again, you know what they say about assumptions. So there's our bad boy right there. So I'll get this tiny little shim, I'll try and shim this because I don't like the thing bumping around there.
Perfect. I bet that was a lot of fuss for nothing, but now it's perfectly seated. Let's get this motherboard into here. Come on, respect my authority! Alright, thank you. This here, it's not a screw, it's like a locating pin. It's extremely, I think it's extremely nice because it helps locate the motherboard. And the builder's best friend is always the magnetic screwdriver. So. And this is a high quality motherboard. I like the integrated IO shield. It's a good purchase, I think. The guy had chosen to become an AM5 or DDR5 guinea pig, like I am on my new computer. So the next logical step now is to get all of these cables uh, connected. I start doing that. So we start with the ATX cable. This is sometimes a little bit tricky, but you know, now that went in really nicely. CPU connection, this is an 8 pin. Oh, that's nice. Problem free as well. All right, so everyone's favorite moment, the GPU. So this is the Asus ROG Strix GTX 1060, six gigabyte. It's a fantastic GPU. I've used this myself for, for video editing for a while. I got it for a really good price. Let's see, do we really want this coming around here, or do I want to bring it through this grommet here? I think I'm bringing it over. It's like one of these things that probably doesn't matter at all, but once you get it into your mind that that's what you want, yeah. Then there's like, there's no choice. Well, if we can add a little bit of tension to this cable, maybe it'll help with GPU sag as well. I click, sir. This is the way. Right, so for the front panel I.O., this is the front panel audio connector, it says AAFP, I checked in the manual. Uh, these are our normal power switches and what have you. So we bring them through this hole in the grommet here, and here is the USB 3 connector, so we bring them through this hole here. So I pulled all of the front I.O. panels through, and to be honest, you're not going to see anything with my hands in the way down here. So I'll connect all of this and I'll bring you back. After I've done that. All right, so that was painful, and you should be glad we didn't film it. But I managed to run the cables for the front IO power switch and stuff from underneath here. This cabinet is very good for cable management. So they're all there. Managed to run the front audio in the same kind of hole under here, so it's very tucked away. For the GPU, we got it coming from above here, so it will help a little bit of GPU sag. And the USB 3 and ATX are also very neat here. And also managed to tuck in the, the CPU fan cable up here, and this one needs to be tightened a bit, the CPU power cable. So yeah, quite happy with that. We have our uh, Wi-Fi adapter. It's a 5G Wi-Fi adapter, which is ample for this build, and will last for many years. I mean, we could have mounted it further down on the main, because there's a lot of space on this motherboard. But we're putting it here, so it's easier for upgrades, you know, in the future. There. And these are uh, these Wi-Fi adapters with external antennas, they are so much better than the USB ones. Not necessarily because of the speed, but because of the signal strength that they receive. The antennas are so much better. So you can choose whether you use these these antennas that you hook on the back here, or if you you can also use the, the extender. So mysteriously. I think that's it. I think what we need to do now is to test this build. You know what I completely forgot? I forgot RGB fans. So these are the Genesis Hydrogen 130 rainbow backlit fan. Kind of RGB. So done with this is that I wrap the cable around around the fan here. It will be kind of hidden behind the, the screws here and then I don't have to have that kind of a, a huge, you know, this clump of cable that's been tidied. I think one exhaust fan will be more enough in this build. So chassis fan number one, yep. 
There and my secret weapon, the flathead screwdriver. I don't use flathead screws, but I use it for this to push these connectors in. I mean, let's push it as high as we can, because I mean, the higher it is, the hotter the air is, of course. I don't like the fact that the Molex connector is kind of like resting on the, the Wi-Fi board there, so I'm going to stretch this a little bit like so. Like that, yeah. Keyboard and mouse and the Wi-Fi. And our HDMI cable. So let's first see if we can get this thing to boot. All right, so here goes nothing. Ooh, light comes on. I'm guessing we're getting this uh, change CPU message first. And also the fact that there's no OS on this should be a dead giveaway. Wow, new CPU installed. Yep, we have post. Let's see, we need to set the date, a couple of things up here. Is it seeing my, my RAM, AI tweaker? There, that should be XMP on, yep, on this motherboard. All right, now I need my Windows 11 stick. So we are installing Windows 11 here. I'll bring you back when I've done this. And of course, we need to do some cable tidying in the back here. So the Wi-Fi 5 card, it maxes out my line both up and down. Just to get any eventual PSU questions out of the way, I'm now running Prime95 and for Mark. So you can see the CPU is completely fully loaded here and the GPU is working. It's being stress tested with 3D. And this is what we're pulling from the wall. So 280 watts. Let's see what we've had max during these tests. So 280 is the max that we've drawn. 550 watt 80 plus that uh, is amp cable management in this case and I think it's a fractal design C with the panel anyway the cable management here was an absolute joy it's really simple running the looms along here and there's spaces all over where you need them there's a cable going from underneath here and the power cable for the PSU. The cable for the cooler was a little bit too long, so I just pulled it back here. So yeah, I think that got pretty neat. Mm -hmm. 